Canto 7. Papa Satan, Papa Satan, Alepe. Thus Plutus with his clucking voice began, and that benignant sage, who all things knew, said to encourage me, let not thy fear harm thee, for any power that he may have shall not prevent thy going down this crag. Then he turned round to the bloated lip and said, Be silent, thou accursed wolf. Consume within thyself with thine own rage. Not causeless in his journey to the abyss, thus is it is willed on high, where Michael wrought vengeance upon the proud adultery. Even as the sail inflated by the wind involved together fall when snaps the mast, so cr fell the cruel monster to the earth. Thus we descended into the fourth chasm, gaining still farther on the dolesome shore, which all the woe of the universe in sacks. Justice of God, ah, who leaps up at so many new toils and sufferings as I beheld, and why doth our transgression waste us so? as doth the billow there upon Chabras, that breaks itself on that which it endeavors. So here the folk must dance their road away. Here I saw people, more than elsewhere, many on one side and the other, with great howls, rolling weights forward by main force of chest. They clashed together, and then at that point each one turned backwards, rolling retrograde, crying, Why keepest, and why squanderest thou? Thus they returned along the lurid circle, on either hand unto the opposite point, shouting their shameful meter evermore. And then, when he arrived there, wheeled about, through this half-circle to another joust, and I, who had my heart pierced, as it were, exclaimed, My master, now declare to me what people are these, and if all were clerks, these shaven crowns upon the left of us. And he to me, all of them were squints, and intellect in the first life, so much that they were with measure they no spending made. Clearly enough of their voices bark it forth, whenever they reach the two points of the circle, where sunders them the opposite's effect. Clerks those were who no hairy covering have on the head, and popes and cardinals, in whom doth avarice practice its success. And I, my master, among these, I ought forsooth to recognize some few, who were infected with these maladies. And he to me, vain thought thou entertainest? The undiscerning life which made them sordid now makes them unto all discernment dim. Forever shall they come to these two buddings. These from the sculpture shall rise again, with the fist closed, and these with the tresses shorn. Ill-giving and ill-keeping the fair world have taken from them, and placed them in the scuffle. Whatever it be, no words adorn I for it. Now canst thou, son, behold the transient farce of goods that are committed unto unfortune, for which the human race each other befit? For all the gold that is beneath the moon, or ever has been, of these weary souls, could never make a single one repose. Master, I said to him, now tell me also, what is this fortune which thou speakest of, that has the world's good so within its clutches? And he to me, O oh, creatures imbecile, what ignorance is this which doth beset you? Now will I have thee learn my judgment of her? He whose omniscience transcends everything, the heavens created and gave who should guide them, that every part to every part may shine, disturbing the light in equal measure. He, in like manner to the mundane splendors, ordained in a general mis ministress and guide, that she might change at times the empty treasures, 
from race to race, from one blood to another, beyond resistance of all human wisdom. Therefore one people triumphs and another languishes, in pursuance of her judgment, which hidden is, as in the grass, a serpent. Your knowledge has no countersand against her. She makes provision, judges, and pursues her governess, as theirs the other gods. Her permutations have not any truce. Necessity makes her precipitate. So often cometh who his turn obtains. And this is who she is so crucified, even by those who ought to give her praise, giving her blame amiss and bad repute. But she is blissful, and she hears it not. Among the other primal creatures gladsome, she turns her sphere, and blissful she rejoices. Let us descend and now into a greater woe. Already sinks each star that was ascending when we set out, and loitering is forbidden. We cross the circle to the other bank, near to a font that boils and pours itself along the guilty that runs out of it. The water was more somber far than purse, and we, in company with the dusky waves, made entrance downward by a path uncouth. A marsh it makes, which has the name of Styx. This tristful brooklet, when it has descended down to the foot of the mine gray shores, and I, who stood intent on beholding, saw people mud spent in that lagoon, all of them naked and with angry look. They smote each other, not alone with hands, but with the head and with the breast and feet, tearing each other piecemeal with their teeth. Said the good master, Son, thou now beholdest the souls of whom anger overcame, and likewise I would have thee know, for certain, beneath the waters, people who are sigh, and make this water bubble at the surface, as the eye tells thee wherever some it turns. Fixed in the mire, they say, we sullen were in the sweet air, which by the sun was gladdened, bearing within ourselves the sluggish rock. Now we are sullen in this sable mire. This hymn do they keep gurgling in their throats, for with unbroken words they cannot say it. Thus we went circling round the filthy fen, a great ark twixt the dry bank and the swamp, with eyes turned unto those who gouged the might. Unto the foot of a tower we came at last. <laughs>